Decades ago, software companies were things that huge teams built. They were things that you chased funding for first and you built later. They were things that were built over the period of you know several years. As time went on and the software landscape changed, lots of things changed along with it to include the speed at which folks could build software startups. Now all of a sudden, instead of it taking years to build a software startup, now it takes months and then it takes weeks. And now, according to a couple of indie hackers and solopreneurs, it can take hours or days. Now I see folks launching AI wrappers and other fairly simple SaaS startups in a matter of a couple of hours. They go from idea to execution very, very quickly. There are some really, really cool things that have come from this. You've got folks who are building these startups in a matter of hours, a matter of days even, that are actually kind of disrupting things. You've got folks who are building companies very, very quickly that would not have otherwise existed because folks are naturally going to kind of feel this distaste for spending you know, years building something that may not even work. Now startups can be built much faster. There is one specific creator who built a framework called Shipfast that is purely focused on getting folks to launch their startups as quickly as possible. This isn't completely unique. There are other uh, frameworks that have been developed by other folks, but Mark Lowe's Shipfast is probably the most popular, and I would argue probably one of the better ones that are out there. I've been using it for a while now to develop Dev Cheat Sheets, which is my uh, developer social media personal knowledge management platform. And honestly, I'm fairly impressed with how quickly it allowed me to start building things. It allowed me to start skipping a couple of steps that are honestly just repetitive and that honestly I didn't need to spend that much dev time on. It also locks you into decisions where you would otherwise maybe spend too much time doing analysis and figuring out what the best possible solution to a problem is. Instead of that, now all of a sudden you are picking one specific thing because you are choosing that framework. So what is Shipfast? Shipfast is a Next.js framework or a, a Next.js template um, is probably a better way to word it that allows you to start building your SaaS a little bit faster. The reason why it starts letting you build your SaaS faster is it gives you components and code right out of the box that you would otherwise have to develop for yourself. This is super useful because, for example, if you're building a social media and personal knowledge management application like I am, you don't really want to worry about Stripe web, web hooks. Like you shouldn't have to kind of develop that from scratch and it kind of can be a pain in the ass to deal with. So Mark and Shipfast basically packaged all of that stuff up and generalized it basically saying, you know, we're not going to do give you the 100% finished code, but we're going to give you as close as humanly possible to it so that you can spend as little time on that stuff as humanly possible and as much time on your code and your project as humanly possible. Basically, it allows you to develop your core features without having to worry as much about the other stuff. Now, my first critique on Shipfast is actually a critique on the folks who are using Shipfast. One of the things that you get access to when you purchase Shipfast. It's about $250, I believe, um, which is a fairly reasonable price. Um, and it's also lifetime, so you get access to it for good. You can launch as many, you know, SaaS as, as you want with that. Um, and, you know, obviously there's no license issues that you're going to run into either. But my issue with the folks who, you know, use or, or who bought Shipfast and get access to the members only like Discord rooms and stuff like that, they think that Shipfast is, I give you all of the code you could possibly need. You don't have to learn JavaScript. You don't have to learn React. You don't have to learn Next. You don't have to learn Stripe. You don't have to learn all of this other stuff. I'll give you all of this. And all you have to do is just kind of plug in your pictures and then you've got a SaaS. Like there are questions pretty regularly in the Discord about like, hey, where's the component for the dashboard? It's like, the, what, how would you even develop a component for a dashboard? The dashboard is going to differ according to what app you're building. So obviously, Mark isn't going to write a dashboard that works for every possible SaaS application. It, you know, the SaaS that I built, Grabber app, which did not rely on, um, on Shipfast, the dashboard for that is going to differ completely 
from the dashboard for dev cheat sheets, which is going to differ completely from the dashboard for lots of other applications that I'll build in the future. So these folks, they jump into it thinking like, okay, I am buying a finished SaaS. All I have to do is plug in the domains and the pictures and all of that other stuff. That's just not how it works. One of the other critiques that I have for it is that it does lock you in to some decisions. So for example, I did not want to use MongoDB. I wanted to use um, Postgres through Vercel. Um, it was a bit of a pain in the ass to convert everything over from MongoDB over to Postgres um, through Vercel. And that's just kind of one of the things that you're buying for it. You, you know, when you purchase a template, you are purchasing the ability to do things a very specific way fairly quickly. You are not purchasing the ability to do a lot of different things very quickly or all things very quickly. So I knew going into it that this was going to be a problem. I didn't want to deal with MongoDB. I wanted to use Postgres. So I knew that there was going to be a little bit of extra time that I was going to have to take to convert things over. Um, I've seen a couple of other people complain that, you know, this plugin or that, you know, uh, specific component doesn't work well with this or that. It's, it's a bit annoying, honestly, to kind of hear that because you should know what you're buying. You're dropping $250 on a template. You should have done a little bit of research on it first. That said, Mark is pretty actively working on new features and new components. He actually dropped one, I think, like this morning um, that you know looked pretty neat. And the design, honestly, is pretty cool. And that's one of the things that I will give to Mark is that it allows me to care less about how bad my design looks because it looks better than it would if I just started from scratch. I'm a terrible designer. You can go look at Grabber app, you can go look at valhalaresearch.net, my personal landing page, you can go look at, you know, lots of other different things that I've designed, they're terrible. What this allows you to do is you get all of those components right out of the box, you get a lot of Tailwind styles, he uses Daisy UI um, for a lot of the design and all of that's kind of done for you and you just kind of have to change the colors up a little bit. Um, I did find it a little bit disconcerting trying to figure out how Daisy UI works and how the Tailwind styles were working and all of that, but that's more of a me problem than a, you know, ship fast problem. But at the end of the day, I'll, I'll give my kind of verdict. My verdict on ship fast is that I'm going to continue using it. I think it is a fantastic template. It allows me to f launch a lot faster. It allows me to kind of worry about a lot of the side stuff less. And it allows me to kind of fill in what I need for my use case. So like with the web hooks with Stripe, I can plug in the code that sends me an email anytime somebody's payment is declined or anytime somebody signs up or anything like that. I can do that myself. You know, I don't have any problem with that because that's an extra feature that I specifically want and that other people might not. Um, you know, but it's got those web hooks done already. I just have to fill in the stuff that I specifically want. So I'm going to continue using ShipFast. I think it's really an awesome framework. It's it's an awesome way to learn Next.js and it's an awesome way to learn like NextAuth and things like that. I've learned a lot about NextAuth just by looking at the pre-written code and how all of that works. So that's been really neat. Um, I, I think if you are looking at ShipFast to launch a SaaS, it's probably a good idea. You just need to know what you're getting into. You don't need to go into it saying, okay, well, now I don't have to learn Next. I don't have to learn, you know, React. I don't have to learn JavaScript. I can just, you know, plug in and get a SaaS. That's not what this is. You're going to be sorely disappointed and you're going to be $250 poorer. Then you could have dropped that 250 bucks on several courses to learn that stuff. Um, if you're a complete noob to Next.js or React, I could go either way. I mean, it, it can be a decent way to learn React or Next.js, but I would argue spending some time on GitHub and looking at free repos is probably a better way to spend your time to learn those things. But ShipFast is awesome. I really have enjoyed using it a lot, and I'm going to continue using it to launch stuff. Um, Dev Cheat Sheets will be coming out v0.1 in like two weeks, so you'll get to kind of see you know something a little bit more in-depth that was built with ShipFast. But if you're thinking about che checking it out, there's going to be a link down in the description. It's not a referral code because I don't think Mark does those. He might, he might not. But yeah, go and check it out. It's awesome. Take it easy. Peace.